So I call this meeting into order at 4.03 p.m. We're going to get started with roll call. Senator Swankit. Senator Swankit. Senator Bassnett. Here. Senator Hashimoto. Here. <coughs> Senator Chimizay. Senator Chimizay. Senator Carlson. Present. Senator Roberts. Here. Senator Angie Demby. Yeah. Senator T. Schaefer. Here. Senator Hawk. Here. Senator Basha. Senator Basha. Senator Singh. Senator Singh. Senator Osman. Senator Waldo? Here. Senator Saha? Here. Senator Raja Gopal? Here. Senator Koku? Here. Senator Wynn? Here. Senator Uzepa? Here. Senator Wing? Yeah. Senator Wing. David Wing? Yeah, yeah we, we, they traded. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Nowak? Howdy. Senator Flynn? Here. Senator Hopwood? Here. Senator Hussein? Here. Senator Reuger? Here. President Stiff? Here. Vice President Soroso? Here. Speaker Khan? Here. All right, moving on to our first order of business today, which is presentations. Do I have Cindy Jenny for residential hall rates? Yes, I'm here. Awesome, you have the floor. Okay, let me pull up um, this presentation to put on the screen. Sure, um, and can we make sure that she has access to share the screen? Thank you. Hey, have you got that? Yes, we do. Okay. Right. Um, what I missed by doing it this way is that I don't get to um, see your your faces and get your reactions that way. So I'll ask you to um, to be intrusive on the presentation and, and raise your uh, or just you know speak out. Um, and I'll, perhaps I'll pause after each slide to request that. Uh, all right. The um, purpose of today's presentation is to talk about how does it work to set residence hall room and meal plan rates. I did this presentation with the Residence Hall Association on Monday and I'm sharing the same information with student government today. This is what we'll talk about. What are the room and board or meal plan rates? When you hear me say board, that means meal plan. I'll try to remember <coughs> those say meal plan, but if I don't, please understand that's what I'm talking about. What is the student consultation process? We'll talk about how that's defined. Uh, we'll talk about what changes have come from this process and then the next step. So room and meal plan rates, that's what we're talking about today. Room rates are the fees that students pay to live in university supervised housing. 
So Crawford, McElroy, Julia Sears, Prescott, and Stadium Heights. And this information um, may be familiar to many senators, um, given that last year was a pandemic year and so many things were disrupted. It, it might be new for some of you. Room rates cover more things than apartment rent payments cover. The room and the furnishings, the utilities. So in our case, that's power and heat. Um, also cooling if it's offered. The cable and internet. Um, and when I say that, really it's internet and then streaming entertainment services, which equal cable TV. Uh, laundry is prepaid in the residence hall rate water, sewer, trash, and recycling services, all the common area amenities, all the cleaning, all the maintenance, services that are front desks, also the rest tech services um, that are in the lower level of Karkowski, and then staff supervision, which includes helping students get connected, um, helping uh, setting up activities, what's on Wednesday programming, um, and then everyone's favorite um, community advisors uh, doing rounds and documenting people for alleged violations of policies. Uh, what's included in meal plan rates? Uh, the food, the staff that plan, order, make, and serve that food, the staff that clean up, maintenance of the dining equipment, the utilities, water, electricity, and gas, the cleaning and maintenance of the dining spaces, Disposable items like cups and napkins, utensils, pots, pans, to-go containers, computers, cash registers, software licensing. Uh, so it's paying for a lot of stuff. Uh, students right now pay about $13.5 for um, a full day on an all-you-care-to-eat plan, come and go as you wish. Uh, that's about the cost of a meal at Chipotle, so it is, um, it's still a, a good deal for um, a food service program that is um, lots of investment in putting the food in front of students and having it be good. So setting the rates for next year. We look at our current expenses and our projected expenses for both the room and the meal plans. Uh, in fact, I just got out of a meeting talking about expenses for meal plans for the coming year. We determine rates that will cover those expenses and also some reinvestment in the facilities. We consider the new services and the amenities that students want in um, the RHA General Assembly meeting on Monday. Reps were uh, enthusiastic in all of the brainstorming they did about um, improvement options. And so I have plenty of work to do in preparing uh, each of those items, preparing a cost per student for each of those items. Um, but it's a RHA General Assembly is really an active move this year. Uh, and then ultimately we have to set a rate to cover those needs. Uh, a question comes up, what if there is a tuition freeze? What, what impact does that have on room and board rates? Um, definitions are helpful here. Tuition is for instruction and the university services that support instruction. All students pay tuition, it's a required fee. A tuition freeze does not apply to room and meal rates. The room and meal rates are a fee that a student who chooses to live on campus pays for that specific service. It's not a mandatory fee, no one's required to live on campus, unless your parents make that requirement, but it's not the university making the requirement. Now, residence halls and student unions are part of the revenue fund. You'll hear more about, many of you are familiar with the revenue fund. For those who aren't, you'll hear more about the revenue fund, but our programs um, are run kind of like individual businesses within the university in that we bring in revenue and that revenue should cover our expenses. Uh, also, important to understand that residential life holds long-term debt um, that's essentially like a mortgage for a house. Um, and we hold that long-term debt on the buildings that we've built since 2008. So that is Julia Sears in 2008, Presca, which opened in 2012, and then the University Dining Center in January of 17. 
the buildings uh, the buildings that are older than that have been paid off and stadium heights is uh, we lease that that apartment complex we don't own it um, so part of a student's room rate goes toward the debt payment and it's always been that way students living here have always been paying the debt payment of buildings that were you know built before they got here what is student consultation let me pause now because I've been going through these slides and I said I would pause periodically are there questions so far um, Cindy once you're done with the presentation we're going to open the floor for questions so any questions will be taken at that point got it thank you so much okay I'll continue um, what is student consultation the university shares information with student leaders about the rates planning process um, we the student leadership of both student government and residence hall association um, met with me a few weeks ago to come up with a mutually agreeable calendar and so this is the first presentation to um, Senate as a part of that calendar uh, students ask questions provide input uh, students in the residence hall association group will vote on the recommendations they are representing students at a rate of you know let's call it one to 40 students one representative per 40 students in a community uh, the board of trustees considers these rate proposals they have the authority to make the decision they want to see evidence that the campus staff has consulted with students so they actually ask the university to send information but they also they want letters from um, students and so that is something that will be a responsibility next semester um, so here is the process captured again um, uh, I, forgive me I still have this slide saying MSSA I should say student government sends a letter to the Board of Trustees describing the consultation process so student government can say um, we were presented with information and it was really terrible or um, we were presented with information and it was helpful we, we like the fees we don't like the fees um, but it's not a matter of saying um, we, we uh, we vote the fees down and we make a different proposal uh, it's really a matter of saying did we have a chance to engage in the process and my hope is that during the engagement in the process I get the feedback um, and then when questions arise I can respond to those uh, the presentations for RHA and, and student government actually started on Monday and then after Thanksgiving will be the timeline for RHA reps to vote make a recommendation to MSSA and then for RHA president Patrick Flynn to make a presentation to excuse me to student government um, and then for you as a group to consider um, consider that process changes that have come from this process quite a few things water bottle fillers on the drinking fountains in the residence halls um, because each of these things have a price tag we've we've asked students um, RHA reps to vote on them what do you want if this costs this do you want it so water bill, bottle fillers on, on drinking fountains the ice machines that we have in each area the reusable to-go containers um, back in the day it was styrofoam uh, the free laundry which is not free it's included in the student room rate uh, food service hours so when I first came to the university uh, the dining hall closed dinner ended at like 6 30 or 7 and um, over time students have said hey can we have this be a longer service time and we've looked at what it would cost to do that and asked students do you want that do you want this extra hour for this price and so we've gotten to where we are now uh, desk supplies an RHA promotional item uh, and then we spent several years really um, shall I say wound up in quite a bit of toilet paper um, then we now provide toilet paper in the bathrooms that are private inside of a unit so that includes semi suites and apartments um, and then we were providing only one ply toilet paper and um, students said absolutely we want to put, pay for two flies so now that's what we do and then finally um, on this list water filters and floor kitchens so we've made a lot of improvements at the requests of students and that's why I like this process 
because I want the services that we're providing and the amenities to be what students want to have. Um, so I appreciate that I get a lot of good feedback. Um, thank you, Cindy. At this point, we have reached uh, the time limit for our presentation. Uh, okay. I would like to open the floor for any questions we have. Um, I will start with Senator Nowak. Uh, howdy, Cindy. Um, do we currently have any projections as to expenses for next year, as well as um, if we have any idea of how many students we can expect to be living within the residential halls and therefore uh, revenue that we can expect for next year and how those numbers compare or is it still too soon? Forgive me, I'm trying to figure out how to, there we go, how to stop sharing so I can have a chance to see you. Um, Joey, you are talking about the next presentation. Okay. Yeah, so that information will be um, information that is shared at uh, November 10th for student government. Thank you. Senator Roberts? Do you mind summarizing uh, what you didn't get the chance to present on? Um, Cindy? Um, can you add more words? What I didn't get a chance to present on um, when? Uh, oh, just, yeah, now? just now? Just now. Yeah. Um, uh, there were a couple of items that come up every year that are um, an RHA promotional item and the serve the items for the front desks and every year they have been passed. I, I think I was it was just concluding, you know, what is going to happen next. There'll be a presentation um, for RHA on November 8th that will start the financials and then that'll come to um, student government on the 10th. So. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Uh, Cyber Hawk? So just a random question. So if a student does not, for the board portion, if they're going, as you just said, it's $30.5, which is equal to a Chipotle meal, what if the students are not using that entire amount? As we know now, it's not carry forward or it's not converted to dining dollars. If Is it possible to see changes in those through the next mm -hmm. year or something like that? Sure, so the question as I heard it was, will there be changes in any of the meal plans that are offered for next year? Um, we asked our dining partner to um, study the meal plans. We also do um, student satisfaction surveys and the responses that we have on student satisfaction are well above national averages and so um, the interpretation is that we have the right mix of meal plans right now. Um, that doesn't mean, I, I can still hear feedback about meal plans. It may inform uh, a change for the year after next. Uh, there is a long lead time uh, in developing new meal plans that are making changes, so I am interested in hearing the concerns. Thank you. Do I have any other questions? Any other questions? Any further questions? Seeing as no further questions, thank you so much for coming in today, Cindy. Um, thank you very much, and um, I hope to be there in person next time. We're looking forward to it. Uh, okay. Moving on to our next presentation of the day, I have Lauren for a marathon. Hi, everyone. Uh, should I go upstairs? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. that raises money for Gillette Children's Hospitals. Um, Morgan here is passing out a handout with all the information that I'm kind of going to go over. I'm just going to sum it up and it helps to have, hear it from someone. Um, so we are historically the biggest philanthropy fundraising event here on campus. And we are asking that different RSLs create teams to raise money and to um, fundraise with us and have other fundraisers on campus. 
So we fundraise throughout the year at different events, and it all culminates up to a final fundraising event in February. The final fundraiser event in February, we invite the families. It's basically just a big party, and there'll be prizes, and there'll be fun, and there'll be dance and music. And it's really just a big celebration that we get to meet these kids whose lives we're actually impacting. So the money that we raise goes towards the Mankato Gillette Children's Hospital. So we are benefiting kids here locally. And we are asking that you create a team with either this is student government or if you are involved in different RSOs or different centers like the LGBT Center or the Women's Center. We ask that you guys kind of get a group together and make a team and fundraise throughout the year. There's different ways you can fundraise. There's some examples in the handout if you share with each other. I only had so many. Um, but yeah, so we ask that you make teams and fundraise and be involved. And if you choose not to be involved in a team, it, we do accept donations towards our overall goal. Um, <coughs> But yeah, so that was my baseline presentation. Awesome. Um, I have a question from Vice President Sorcel. Do you guys have socials that we can follow and keep updated with for like the events that come up? Yes. So we have um, a few events coming up here in the next week. They're not so much socials. We just have events where we're fundraising. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean like social media accounts. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, I apologize. Um, we do have, it's MNSU Mavathon is our Instagram, and then we also have a Facebook page and a Twitter, which is less used, but we do have a Twitter. Um, but we will have all sorts of signage posts around school as well, and then all of that will be posted on our social media. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. President Stiff, thank you for coming in. So you mentioned that you have a goal and that people can donate um, even if they don't um, have a team. So what is the goal and how? where can we find where to donate? So historically, um, we have raised over $26,000 in past years. Um, obviously with COVID, we are now reinventing ourselves and trying to make it something, you know, back to the where it used to be, but we are still reinventing and re-communicating with the community about things that we do. Um, we have a goal this year of about 30,000. Um, and we each, it's, we each have a page called, it's all a donor drive, and that will also be posted all around campus, and um, it should be within your, the handout as well. So there's a website on the handout, and you either choose, I wanna register or I wanna donate, and we prefer to have people involved in register, making a team super easy, um, but we also accept donations through Thank you. Senator Hawk? Can individual RSOs or something fundraise for themselves or is it just going to be for MAP, like for the Gillette Children's Hospital? So it would be for Gillette's, but we have teams set up within um, Donor Drive. So our Mapathon Exec have, has a team. We have a couple of fraternities who have each a team and um, different RSOs like the Women's Center are making a team. And so we'll compete against each other to, you know, comes up with the best fundraiser, who um, fundraises the most, just things like that. There's, you're competing against other teams on campus to raise for where the collective goal will go towards Gillette Children's. Thank you. Do I have any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing as no further questions, thank you for coming in today, Lauren and Morgan. All right, moving on to our next order of business, which is open forum. Do I have anyone for open forum today? Uh, Samia and Maria. Maria, you have the floor. Uh, from just here over there. Over there. Just to give a little bit of context, open floors where, where uh, we give five minutes of time limit. So cool. All right. you can get started Perfect. whenever um, you like. Well, hi, uh, hello everyone. I'm Maria Rios. I'm from the Student Events team and I hold the social media marketing. So 
position for them. And then I'm Salma, I'm the business manager for Student UN. Yeah, so we just kind of want to keep in touch base with you all. Um, we haven't had a chance to visit this meeting yet and talk to you guys about what's been going on. So um, after a busy but successful homecoming, we've been getting slowly back into the rush of the late October events. We do have events of like coming up, so we just want to like run through them and then what you can expect from them. Um, starting off this Friday, <coughs> October 22nd, we have the Price is Right for Family Weekend. There is a showing at 7 p.m., at 8 p.m., and at 9 p.m. Um, it will be in the Alexander Auditorium. Um, it's going to be running similar to like the game show that you see on TV, and there's over like 1,500 worth of prizes. So keep an eye out for that. Visit us. Um, if you get children to participate, you can play the games um, live, and then you can also bring in family members, and then they'll be able to participate as well. Uh, so next event is on Saturday, 23rd. Uh, it's the Charlie Barron's concert. He's a local comedian. The gates will open at 6 p.m. and the event will start at 7 p.m. The tickets are still available, and it's free for MSU students. The family tickets are $5 and the general public tickets are $30. It'll be in the Taylor Center, and hopefully it will be the biggest event that we'll have in the Taylor Center this year. Yeah, yeah, so head out there, it's super fun. Um, the giveaway on our social media for student events team is still open, so if you wanna sign up for that, um, we are giving away a free meet and greet, and then free tickets to the show. And we will be choosing a winner tonight, so if you haven't entered for that, make sure you do so. Um. And then finally, um, for October, next week on Wednesday the 27th, we have the Haunted Takeover. So what happens during that time is we shut down the CSU, the second floor, the first floor, and we give tours um, for students to go through like a haunted house type of thing. Um, we start off in the Austrian Auditorium, and then we guide groups throughout the CSU. Um, it's from 8 to 10 p.m., but line up as whenever you can really. I mean, we've seen people line up as early as like 6 p.m and the line usually gets pretty long, so head out there early if you want to be a part of that. Um, we're also taking help, so if, like, if an RSO wants to help out with the room or something, I think most rooms have been selected for now, and um, so the RSOs that want to participate are already involved. Um, but if you still want to do something, if you want to help out, um, they're still open for that, so just reach out to Student Events through our social medias or visit us in our office in the Student Activity Center. And then, yeah, that would be it. Um, for all these events except the Haunted Takeover, you can get your tickets at mnsuevents.com. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Vice President Sorsel? Um, This isn't necessarily a question for you, but a comment for senators. Student government does have a room, and I think I remember it's like purge themed or something. And so we'll be expecting a lot of you guys <laughs> to help volunteer and scare um, our constituents, so that'll be fun. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Senator Saha? I have a comment as well. Like, uh, if the rooms are taken, some uh, RSOs also get $75 for a part in that event. That is correct. So, just one quick comment on that. Yes. Yes, there will be, if your RSO is already involved and has room assigned, you will be receiving $75 for that event. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Senator Nowak? I'm very sorry because this also is not targeted at you guys. This is targeted at uh, Kara Spursel. Um <laughs> What room do we have? I if you know. happen to know. Okay. Last time we had it, we had this room, but I'm not sure what we're assigned to. Any questions about the haunted takeover can be forwarded to Brian. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Yeah, he's our um, special events chair, so yeah, reach out to him and he'll have more information. Otherwise, he'll reach out to you, I'm sure, with time. Let you know what we have and everything. That'd be great. Just have him send us an email. For sure. Thank you. Senator Hawk? Can you just repeat the date for the Haunted Takeover? I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, no, of course. The Haunted Takeover is on Wednesday, October 27th from 8 to 10 p.m. Awesome. Do I have um, Senator Saha? Um, for those actually, um, sorry, the comment again. Those actually participating for the student government, uh, the setup time starts at five o'clock, so. Do I have any further questions? Any further questions? Any questions? Seeing as no further questions, thank you for coming in today. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, do I have anyone else for open forum? Anyone for open forum? Anyone for open forum? Let me take a quick look at you. All right, moving on to our next order of business, which is approval of consent agenda. Do I have any dissent on the approval of consent agenda? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seen as no dissent, the consent agenda is approved. Moving on to next order of business, which is officer reports. I'm going to get started with uh, President Stiff. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's Senate meeting. Um, to start off, I just want to plug an event that's going on. Um, last week, the coordinator for the program coordinator for adventure and education program, Sam Steiger, came in and talked to us about the hike that's occurring at Seven Miles Creek or County Creek, and that event is happening this Friday, October 22nd, from 3:30 to 6:30 p.m. So, if you're interested in hiking and kind of seeing nature and all the pretty fall colors, uh, you can contact Sam Steiger and Maverick Adventures for that. Um, you've also been sent an email about that. So I think there was an all student email that went out for students. So if you're interested, you can um, register through that email link. Um, so City and Local Affairs is a student government committee and we are looking for committee members. So with this um, committee, your job would be basically to kind of interact with the community at a larger level than just campus. So you would go to maybe City Hall meetings, um, uh, residents, well not residence hall, but um, neighborhood association meetings and basically you'd be plugged in with the community at large and not just um, our campus community. So um, again, we're looking for members for that and then we're trying to improve and build upon city initiatives that might also affect um, our school. Um, we have started doing one-on-ones with people that is just a chance to catch up and hear any concerns or questions you have and also provide clarification. So. Um, look out in your emails for those one-on-one -on -one invites, and we've already started doing that, so I've enjoyed uh, meeting with the people I have so far. Um, so make sure that you're also reading emails. Um, we try not to bombard you with too many emails at once, um, but we do know who is and who isn't reading them, depending on the type of questions we get, because sometimes we answer those uh, questions in emails, so please make sure that you're reading those as well. Um, RSO recognition is coming up, so I think there's been a little confusion about that. Um, student government does um, put kind of like the final approval on RSO recognitions, but um, that first goes through Emmy Mink, so that will be coming down the pipeline soon. Um, we will be approving RSO soon, but it has not gotten to us yet, and so just wanted to provide a little clarification on that. Um, and then last but not least, there are two spots left for search committees. One is for the Dean of Library and Learning, and one is for the Dean of Allied Health and Nursing. So um, two, the other two positions have been filled. And so we are still looking for representatives. They don't have to necessarily be senators. But if you are interested in um, serving on search committees for these two um, positions, then you can contact me, and then I will get a chance to appoint you. Yeah. Thank you. Do I have any questions for President Stiff? Any questions? Any questions? Seeing as no questions, I am going to move on to West President Somersault. Awesome. So I have a few things for us today. First thing, I'm gonna pass these Sharpies down both directions. If you guys could write your pronouns on your placards, that way we do not have to print out a bunch of new ones and spend more of our printing budget. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, the second thing is um, I'm gonna send around these thank yous that I should have prepared ahead of time. Um, you can just sign your name. Sure, yeah. I'm just gonna, okay, this one will be Adam plus um, I'm going to pass around these thank yous for the retreat. Um, so if you could fill these out, one of them will be um, to my brother and his wife for hosting, another one um, for Emma for coming and speaking, and then another one for John for coming and speaking. Um, so you can see on the back which one's for which, and then we'll like actually fill them out later. So if you guys could sign those. Um, the next thing is I have an update on Bird. Um, David Cow or Mr. Cowan said that uh, the bird scooters will be hibernated on November 1st. So they will be picked up from campus and then um, will not return until spring. I also have an update on the racks. So we did receive the racks and we ordered them. Um, 
he could explain this better than I can, but essentially we ordered from this vendor that marketed that they would sell generic electric scooter racks. And we were like, sweet. And then we picked Bird as our vendor, right? And then uh, we got the racks and realized they are not so generic because the Bird scooters do not fit. So that is why there's been a delay. So it's an easy-ish fix. They just need to cut into them a little bit to make it work. Um, so I was told that's going to be worked on largely during winter break, and then they should be ready to be like cemented around campus by the spring rollout. So if you hear your faculty complaining that, or people complaining that they're left everywhere and there's no places for them to even be parked, reassure them that we have a plan for that. There's just a slight delay of game. Um, but yes, November 1st. Um, the next thing is, uh, so for the food pantry, the Maverick Food Pantry, I am looking for two to three um, senators to sit on the Food Pantry Advisory Group. You're gonna be working on things like making sure, making sure the services are best affecting students, how to deal with the fact that they're at max capacity and are growing out of their space, um, hours, general student input, and making sure that this is a student-led um, operation on campus. So it's super, super important. It's really instrumental to our collective agenda. So I will pass something out during speaker con. Um, but yes, so I need two to three students for pantry. And then I also need one student for um, the President's Task Force on Flexible Work and Service Delivery. So basically, this group is going to meet to try and figure out um, faculty and staff who want um, more options in terms of what their workday looks like. So whether that's partially from home or all the time from home or just COVID has really opened up, us up to a bunch of different possibilities. So we need to make sure that we can provide faculty and staff with the much flexibility while not reducing the quality of services for students. So I need one person for that. Um, and then I think that is all. I would just continue to encourage you to sign up for these events that we have coming up um, to volunteer. And then also I know the PR and marketing team is working on putting together some more like social events because we talked about that a lot at the retreat. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Uh, do I have any questions for Vice President Sorsel? Sandra Hall. So for like you were saying to volunteer for the events, is just in case we don't, we are not able to like stay for the entire hall to take over, could we just come in to decorate the room at five o'clock and then leave by six or maybe 6.30 before sure. the event starts? I would just always advise you to over communicate rather than under communicate. So if you know you can't be there the whole time, just let the um, speaker con know. Okay. So that way it doesn't seem like you just dipped out, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah. All right, do I have any other questions? Any other uh, senator? Namika? Yes. Um, Madam Vice President was addressing about the food pantry. Uh, can you elaborate? Yep, so there is a student advisory group that is going to be formed that allows students from all over all, air, ooh, all areas of campus to give input on the oh, cool, on the uh, the Maverick Food Pantry and how it's operating and the direction it's going and stuff. And so it'd basically be a group of students to help advise the food pantry. Awesome. Do I have any other questions? Any other questions? Any questions? Seeing as no further questions, we're going to move on to the last officer report of the day, which is my report. So, um, we have quite a few things to talk about. We have had our two officer hours submissions so far. And based on those submissions, I have emailed a few people about um, the submissions, but I think I'm, I'm just gonna take the opportunity to explain more in detail. Um, what are office hours? What I wanna see is bi-weekly, you're at least putting in six office hours. You can do more than six, but not less than six. I saw a whole bunch of senators doing three hours, four hours, five hours, not acceptable. I wanna make sure that you are being as involved as possible. It doesn't have to be three, three hours. It can be two hours in one week, four hours in the other week. 
um, but just make sure that you're uh, doing the full six hours. You can be, do more than that. That's not a question. Always welcome more hours. They are bi-weekly. So first was um, scheduled to be submitted on 1st of October, and then the second one was 15th of October, and then <coughs> so on, it will be bi-weekly. What that means is I want to see only hours. So if you submitted the first on 1st of October, I want to see hours from 1st of October until the 15th of October. I don't want to see the hours from September. That does not count. Um, if you are meeting with a person and you are putting that as your office hours, I appreciate putting a name, but I would also like to see the title because I saw some people putting in, I was meeting with um, Tom talking about this. Sorry, I don't know who Tom is. I would appreciate a title. Um, and then try to be, uh, try to be like practical with the hours. I don't wanna, I, I'm not sure if I wanna see you meeting with Tom or Todd for three hours discussing about something if there wasn't like something out of it. So yes, one hour of meeting, talking about your project or discussing about it makes sense, but three hours do not. Um, what these hours consist of is I want to see that you're getting involved in committees. Going back to the fact again that I had one-on-ones with uh, a few senators this week, and what I found out is not all the senators are involved in two committees. So I have a sign-up sheet here where I'm just gonna send it over, uh, has everyone's name on it, and I wanna uh, have you guys put down the committees that you have already joined and are participating in. You have to be joining two committees. One of them would be, if you're an academic senator, it would be your academic uh, affairs committee. If you're an off-campus or res life senator, then it would be your student affairs committee. But you have to be involved in committees, and I wanna see those on your office hour submission that you attended your academic affairs committee, you attended your student basic needs committee meeting. So that's a part of your office hours. I'm gonna just pass this along. So please put down the number of committees you have joined, and they have to be two. So if up until now you are only in one committee, which was a default, please look into presence and join another committee. Um, so yes, office hours, your committee involvement, your senator, uh, senator project, your meetings with the deans, don't do meetings for three hours with somebody who doesn't have a title. Um, and volunteering, as much as I appreciate you volunteering, volunteering at Campus Kitchen does not count as your office hours. Yes, please do that, but it's not a student government related work. Um, I appreciate you going and tabling, but that I will not be accepting two hours for if you tabled with somebody or some other organization and mentioned student government. Yes, one hour, acceptable, but not like two or three hours for tabling for some organization and just mentioning student government on it. Because I just wanna make sure that you're using these hours to be as involved as possible. Um, and then the last thing again is, I had fun with checking in with senators I had today. Please look forward to email for the rest of the senators who I'm gonna be checking in. Um, use this time to, um, so whoever you're gonna be having check-ins with, use this time to be prepared. All the questions you have, write them down so that the meetings are usually half hour we're doing for check-ins. So uh, make sure that you're utilizing that time, write down all your questions and concerns and we would be more than happy to answer those for you. And I think uh, that's all I have for my report today. I will take any questions at this point. Senator Hall. So one of those are like, if we are signing up for the office hours, like giving our Zoom link or being in the office, what if somebody, for like specifically for Zoom links, if nobody shows up for any questions or something like that, do we still get those office hours or are they like transferred? You um, do, you do. You're done with the question? I have one more question, but that's for vice presidents. So Russell. Okay. 
I'll answer first this and then we'll okay. move on to that. All right. So for the office hours, if you're doing them virtually or um, if you're physically sitting somewhere and doing it, it still counts as your office hour because you did put that hour uh, and you were available for any questions. So yes, it does count as your office hours, but don't, uh, but don't do like more than one hour at a time. Uh, just try to do like maybe one hour on Wednesday and one hour on Friday so that we have some flexibility and work around. And then you can also use that time to work on your center project in case nobody's coming in for any questions. Um, center Roberts? Yeah, not that I've done, you know, three, a three hour thing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But say, you know, that first hour is a meeting and then the other two hours is working on implementation of the project. Can that be counted as three hours in the event totally. that happens? Totally. Uh, I'm not I just, saying that that's going to happen for me, I was just wondering. Yeah, no, that does count as, I just don't want to see that, for example, you were meeting Tom and discussing about your project for three hours. Um, if you were meeting with him for an hour and then the rest of two hours you spent working on your senator project, yes, that counts. Um, Sandra Osman. Yes, I just have a question about the volunteer because that did count as office hour last year, but also like other RSOs do count volunteer um, volunteer hour, like up to one hour for office hours? Um, what I'm trying to do this year is have senators as involved in Senate projects as possible. So yes, in situations where you are volunteering somewhere and representing student government for an hour, I will accept that. But uh, I saw a few students doing completely just volunteer hours for like three, four hours or two hours. Not gonna accept that. So yes, one hour where you volunteered and represented student government, where you like mentioned that, hey, you, I'm a senator um, and mentioned student government just in general, I will accept one hour for that. So out of six, one hour. Okay. Thank you. Uh, senator Nolak. Are we allowed to spend uh, to count time spent on general student government projects and activities that may not be our stated project as office hours if we haven't a lot of time that we spent doing it? So, um, if you are a coordinator and a senator at the same time, um, if you're doing work which is related to your coordinator, that will not be counted as your s senator office hours. Um, but yes, if you were volunteering or let's say you signed up to come and decorate for the haunted house takeover, that counts as your senator hours. But if you're like doing something which was not a part of your senator duties or like it's a part of your coordinator duties or something else, that will not count. Uh, Senator Hawk. So that was for President Silver. So just in case. Is, does it have to be like three for the food pantry or can there be more? They told me two to three. However, if you're interested, so your basic needs is another good option. Okay. Yeah. Uh, President Stick? So what I'm hearing is just like from Speaker Khan, just be practical about your hours, please, and don't lie. Because like we can tell. Yeah. So again, it's just not logical if you are volunteering on behalf of the Women's Center, don't write that down for student government office hours because that's not what you're doing for student government. So what I'm hearing is just be practical, be honest, yeah. and be present for them. Thank awesome. you. Um, and the last thing I'm just going to mention is I did send out an email with a warning for the senators who did not submit their office hours and that I've had um, mostly 80% of the senators reach out and uh, submit later on or give me a valid excuse. But if you're one of the senators, who did receive a warning email and still did not reach out to me about why there was not a submission, then that would be a case going on to standards. So please, please, please communicate. Um, <coughs> like we already said, over communicating is better than under communicating. So um, don't miss out on the deadlines and communicate everything possible. Um, my last thing on the report is Dean of the Day. So today I have Dean Waltzox. You have the floor. Hi. Hello. Uh, yes. 
Uh, yes, you're going to get so sick of seeing me. I come to a lot of these meetings, I just enjoy listening in, but today is my official day to represent the Council of Deans. I don't have a whole lot to say other than it's midterm, hang in there. You know, I hate October. It's the worst month ever in terms of academics because the bloom is off the rose for the semester. All your tests are coming due. Finals are like finally starting to be visible in the distance, don't panic. You got this, really. So, you know, just hang in there, please. Also, can I just say I'm so excited about Charlie Barron's coming this weekend. If you don't know who he is, he is a comedian who makes fun of the Midwest. If you're from the Midwest, you're gonna find him funny. If you're not from the Midwest, you're gonna find him super funny because he's making fun of all the things that the rest of us don't understand about Midwesterners. So I'm going to encourage you to attend that. But please just continue to try to find balance between your academics, between your personal life, between the volunteering that you're doing, the work that you're doing here for student government. Y'all are doing an important service for the university and for your fellow students. We appreciate that. We recognize that. It may not feel like the students always recognize that, but they do. So thank you for that. Hang in there. You got this. Thank you for coming in, and it is always lovely seeing you. Uh, Senator Hashimoto, did you have a question? Oh, yeah. I think in the last question, Ralph, I think I was like, you know, I just got my car a little late. Uh, no, I just, I just wanted to wonder, uh, I just wonder, like, if I was missing, possibly, but is there any, like, a gu written guideline for the office hours? Because it seems like a lot of people have a question, and which is not counted, like, which was counted in the last year, and which is not counted in this year, or whatever, whatever, whatever. There and isn't, there isn't a proper guideline. Sure. I'm trying to be very open, but sure. practical at the same time. So um, I can come up with a document if that's something that would help you. But just to answer, um, in general, office hours consist of your senator project. Uh, if you're spending time doing your senator project, that is your office hour. If you are doing, if you're holding office hours with, for which you provided us a proper time, that let's say Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m., I will be doing my office hours in this location. Or if you're doing it online, I will be doing office hours online, and this is the link that counts as your office hours. You can also use that time to work on your senator projects in case no one shows up. Uh, attending the meetings for your committees counts as your office hours. Attending the meetings with your deans or administrations counts as your office hours. Please, uh, when you meet with a dean or administration, provide me with their title so that I know that you met with somebody for your project. Uh, counts as your office hours. Volunteering, um, I, I want to be open to volunteering because I still want to encourage student government to be involved with other organizations. But um, if it's an event for another organization and you're spending two, three hours doing volunteering, I don't want to count that as your office hours because I still want to see you being more involved in student government. Um, so. That's pretty much it. If other than that, if you have any questions, just shoot me a quick email and I will answer that. Um, for right for the past, if you have submitted office hours um, that were not in these criteria, I have still accepted that. But from now on, please make sure that we're doing we're making the full use out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it's not overwhelming for you to, you know, getting a question from us, like, constantly, like, hey, like, is it going to count or is it not going to be counted? And I'm pretty sure that you were just doing that tons of emails or whatever. That's like, okay. okay it's a part of my job, so <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. Do I have any other questions? Seeing as no further questions, I am going to move on to the next order of business, which is Senator Reports. I am going to start with Senator Roberts. Hello, friends. Uh, so first off, I wanted to talk about a little bit of what I've been doing in terms of my projects. Um, three projects going on here uh, right now. First being on terms of graduate orientation. 
uh, and making that a better process so it's more accessible so graduate students have a better idea of what's going on in campus when they come here. Uh, right now I've met with the, uh, uh, the wonderful Dean of Graduate Studies, Veltras, and uh, I've also uh, met with the Director and Associate Director of uh, Graduate Studies. Uh, and what we are working on for this uh, upcoming uh, year, this upcoming cycle, is putting graduate orientation stuff in one place instead of this D2L mess of broken links. Uh, right now, a lot of graduate studies orientation is put on a D2L and isn't exactly clear, has several broken links, it takes us to pages that give us that it doesn't exist. Uh, essential pages such as where to get our math cards. Uh, I remember that huge struggle uh, when I was coming onto campus just this early on this fall of wondering, well, how do I get one of those? Uh, it ended up being a question answered by my department rather than a question that should have been easily accessible through graduate orientation. So what we are working on right now is to put that in one page uh, where admitted students, uh, no matter where they are, instead of seeing it through a D2L page, just being it on the main page of newly admitted graduate students and having that all in one central place. One thing that we will be needing as we're working on this project is we need graduate students uh, who are willing to make videos uh, because we want to make videos uh, to show how do you use D2L? Because a lot of other institutions don't use D2L. They use programs like Moodle and several other uh, systems uh, instead of the D2L system, which is incredibly confusing to graduate students who are not from the Minnesota State system. So we're working on that and implementing a system that's on one page, that's easily accessible, that doesn't have to worry about clicking links to finding other places that are potentially dead. It's just all in one place, convenient for all graduate students to see. The second project I'm working on is uh, not going as well uh, right now, to be honest, uh, and it's working on the grievance policy. Uh, particularly what we're looking on uh, right now and what I've also talked with the Dean of Graduate Studies and Director and Associate Director of Graduate Studies is that right now we're running into this huge issue between the informal process and the formal process of reporting professors uh, for inappropriate behaviors. Um, and there's a lot of fear uh, with a lot of graduate students and what I've realized is also applicable to undergraduate students as well, uh, running into these issues of being fearful of reporting professor uh, because it would be dragging their name through the mud for one reason. Uh, that was one of my most common responses I got when I was talking to a number of graduate constituents that, that it was drag it, they ran the risk of dragging their entire name through the mud uh, for their entire department. Uh, my proposed solution, uh, and which it needs a lot more work, and I'm aware of that, and I would love for other members of this body, Senate, uh, and other um, faculty members and deans to get engaged in this project to help me work on this um, is to have it as a confidential reporting process instead to where they don't have to risk dragging their name into the mud uh, for potential professors that they might need a recommendation letter down the road for potentially say graduate school for those undergrad students but also in terms of career options because many graduate students might be looking into potentially PhD programs afterwards or even potentially into their careers afterwards. They might need some of these recommendation letters from some of these professors from the department without being forced to drag their name through the mud of the reporting. So a confidential process that doesn't force their name to be out there would be very helpful to several of these students who are fearful of reporting and won't report things that should be reported. Uh, my third project that I'm working on, and I'm waiting for a response uh, from the uh, Dean of Arts and Humanities right now, uh, is working with a potential idea of an Arts and Humanities student. And the reason for this is so many times um, Arts and Humanities finds themselves, uh, especially with a lot of graduate students, have a lot of things that they need to do that costs a lot of money. 
uh, theater, music, communications, list goes on of different departments that need more money to be able to do some of the things that students need to do to be able to be effectively prepared, prepared into their careers. Uh, in terms of their MFA degrees or MA or MS degrees, in terms of related projects that come to student related fees, that we realistically do need a fee so those, those, uh, those projects can be appropriately funded uh, and appropriately done without running into the issue of seemingly stealing from other departments. Uh, so an arts and humanities fee will be, be better able to cover those expenses that graduate students will need uh, in terms of those proper programs themselves. Uh, I also wanted to take note of some other projects that I've been working on with some other senators uh, as well. Uh, with Senator Reuter and uh, Senator Flan with the VRC. Uh, I look forward to continuing working on their veterans project with them. I've had a great conversation with Tim down in the VRC. It was a really great conversation. And, and their needs uh, in terms of their future of the VRC and being able to also help veterans on this campus, but also being able to spread uh, the wings of essential ideas like financial support for not just only their field of veterans, but they want to be able to help students beyond veterans as well to understand uh, finances and so much more beyond that and be really inclusive to the entire school as a whole. Uh, one of the things that have briefly came up in uh, academic affairs today uh, and a project that I would love to work with uh, Senator Hawk with was uh, a, a thing that really much affects uh, graduate students right now and that is uh, the graduate students uh, being uh, having this 14 hour work limit and also running into this issue of pay issues and not being paid enough uh, in terms of graduate students. So I'd love to work with Senator Hawkmore on their project uh, as um, they admitted earlier in uh, academic affairs that they've run into a dead end. And I would love to help them be able to work with graduate students as a whole uh, because that's gonna be really important uh, that graduate students and uh, Senator Hawk and can make that project happen because uh, a lot of graduate students are thinking about unionizing right now uh, to actually take action on this problem uh, of not being able to be paid enough, being shorted on the hours because of state policies, and to finally actually have a say in how they can fund their own education. With that, I yield to questions. Thank you. I'm going to get started with Preston Stiff. This isn't a, a question, more of a comment. I was going to say I'm very impressed with your Senate report, Senator Roberts. I would say for everyone in here, this could be a good example of what we're looking for. You came in, you said what you've done, what you're going to work on, and it seems like a lot. So <laughs> um, I'm surprised at the like four projects, but I appreciate it. So I would just say good job, and I'm um, very pleased with your report today. Thank awesome. you, Madam President. Vice President Um Yes, I agree. Um, my you said a lot there, so we should definitely sit down at some point and <laughs> parse through that. But the main question that I had coming out of that was when you brought up this um, arts and humanities fee. Yes. Are you meaning that to go to the entire student body or students in that? And then you said graduate specific. Is this to graduate students or is this for undergrad as well? I'm going to table that question for now because <laughs> I'm still figuring that out and I'm looking forward to my meeting with the Arts and Humanities Dean uh, okay. before being able to effectively answer that question. But original idea wise, probably to the whole student body. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe Arts and Humanities <laughs> students. Uh, uh, tabling that for now. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Do I have any other questions? Any other questions? Any questions? Seeing as no further questions, you did a great job, Sandra Roberts. <laughs> All right, um, my next central report is Senator Hashimoto. Okay, thank you so much for the time. Uh, I would like to report my progress regarding my project 
And uh, one of the submitted projects uh, uh, on the student senate portal is about the, I've been actually thinking for the possibility of implementing some sort of intercultural consensus raised thing training across the campus, which is available for uh, most of the students. So that was like the, the thing that I've been seeking for. I have been having a meeting with the faculty members and also I actually talked with the, uh, one of the persons from the Woman Center, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, uh, and I would like to actually post a couple of things around that if you don't mind. And my initial idea around that was like if there's any way that I can actually put it in as a part of like a registration requirement, either uh, orientation, but uh, we actually go through the conversation about if it's actually ethically right to mandate to that kind of training as it is as such a controversial issue. And also we are probably the individuals is really biased, so we there's a lot of difficulty around how to actually make it a more uh, less bias or uh, with some sort of consensus at the legislative level. level. So I was think, searching through the idea of like implementing training from the state of Minnesota, which I understand that as the most of the training is actually part of their department of the legislative decision. And uh, so that was like the one thing that I was thinking of. I am going to connect with the uh, the one of the team uh, who is in the undergraduate on um, for the title. I think I got it there. Uh, there we go. Let's see. So diversity and uh, the staff from the diversity and uh, equity and inclusion persons suggested the con uh, connecting with the team who is taking care of the first year uh, seminar uh, curriculum. Sounds like she has an idea of like and the connection with the state legislative uh, trainings at the same time, she might be able to help if I would like to switch the um, switch the tactics to reach the more and more about the student population regarding to this issue. Maybe that's a possibility if we can actually work on those first year curriculum as the uh, program usually calls a lot of population. From the faculty side, however, uh, I have heard the history about how the school as a whole has been trying to raise the intercultural competency across the students. Uh, they have implemented a program called um, undergraduate, uh, undergraduate, uh, undergraduate graduation requirement, diverse cultures, and they actually made a little bit of charts uh, categorizing, the, uh, categorizing the courses in the purple and gold which mean that they are actually putting them in classes which uh, they think that gonna uh, increase the student's intercultural competence. Uh, students are actually required to take the, one of those courses along the guideline in order to graduate with undergraduate degree at MNSU Mankato. That has been the, one of the um, academic side of the effort around that. Uh, I just was still going through about if it's gonna be appropriate to uh, hang around there, even uh, since the one of the faculty members that I talked with, uh, she advised that it is uh, a little bit more complication around um, if the one of the implementations that I was trying to make is gonna be redundant around that uh, academic side of the effort or not. So I am actually going to go check with the uh, diversity and equity uh, and inclusion staff around asking them the question around if it is going to be too redundant for them or if it's, if it's possible to actually pull out some of the seminars or training that they've already implemented here. So that's going to be my next step. And in addition, well, this is actually the different project that I'm thinking of, but I was talking with uh, one of the staff from the graduate school, uh, graduate studies, that she was talking about how uh, after undergraduate students graduate from the MNSU, they instantly lose the connection, uh, which made a connection between alumni. So they're less likely to have the uh, connection with alumni and uh, they cannot really collaborate with them. And that actually relates to the, one, of the, one of the ideas that I was thinking of how uh, sometimes students are a little confused about the career pathway and that it might be a little bit 
uh, helpful if the students can actually uh, see either created the video or maybe have the uh, little mentorship program in between. So I'm going to work on that thing, but if any of the senators are interested in uh, working on the Illuminate, Illuminate Communication and Connection, please let me know, but that would be my center report. Thank you. Do I have any questions? President Stepp? Another comment, another great center report. Thank you for giving that, and it was very informative. Can you expand a little bit more on the alumni communications part? Are you are you looking to just establish like stronger connections with alumni here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, the the discussion actually started between the dean, the Chris Brown, uh, College of Earth and Humanity, that uh, we are looking for the certain population to in order to diversify <laughs> our college population. Uh, I actually had a conversation with another person from the graduate study, which uh, I should have probably get the title, <laughs> but I don't want to mention the name without the title. So yeah, <laughs> so I was actually talking with them. It's like, how about expanding that to a little bit more a larger scale, which I thought it's interesting because I can actually include a little bit more senators or uh, senators uh, regarding this issue. But uh, what we are anticipating is a lot of students are uh, not really aware of what they can actually, what kind of career pathway that they're going to get after graduating from the school with that degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are thinking of like, if, what if we can actually make a little guideline, for example, if you can have an alumni, uh, get a connection with an alumni and making a video creation about how they actually utilize their degree after graduating from. Would it be helpful to actually get some something like that? So that kind of like if getting the information, a career-related vision from the alumni people is actually what we are uh, anticipating on, huh? but not limited in that certain way. So uh, still, I, I still keep it really flexible for sure, uh, as I'm looking for another people to get involved in for sure uh, uh, at this point. But yeah, that was my initial initial thought of that. Thank you. Vice President Sorsal? Um, Two things. I think that's a great idea to have a video series of what did you do with your degree mm -hmm. after getting it here. That's like one of the best ideas I've heard in a really long time. Um, and the second thing that I want to say is, are you collaborating with Senator Roberts? Uh, no. Okay, well I've heard you say graduate stuff, and I've heard you say arts and humanities stuff, so let's uh, Yankee swap sure, here sure. and collaborate a bit. So, yes. Uh, President Stiff? Another comment. Um, as a student who's also in arts and humanities and a mass media major, I think, again, that would be a great idea. I would love to hear more about like careers and you know how people have succeeded after MNSU with that, with a degree in that college. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that project. Thanks. Awesome. We can't stop. All right. <laughs> Did I have any further questions? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Senator Hashimoto, for a good report. Uh, I'm going to do my last senator report of the day, which is Senator Sahal. Sorry, y'all. I was supposed to present last week, but like I was really sick, so I couldn't make it last week. So I'm gonna do my presentation this week. Um, so I'm working on two projects right now, actively. One is a feedback which I received from my constituency regarding the rent increases in the Mankato community area, as well as how um, a lot of issues that the tenants are facing while residing in houses and how it's not being resolved. So I was uh, doing my research into it and I was uh, looking into rent stabilization and looking more deeper into the tenancy policy that Minnesota State, uh, I mean, Minnesota has for their tenants. And I'm like, I did my little bit of research on rent stabilization and effects and pros and cons of it, as well as like, the rights the tenants has, because like a lot of you know, like those are living off campus, like um, the tenants does not get much notice of their renewal period. Like most of the, if you're living like off campus right now, you are having to think about re-signing your lease by probably end of this month or end of next, and else they might put up a house show or a house tour and you might lose your spot. 
and like and the reason was too like I would think that's too early for some and like not enough notice and I also heard complaints from my constituency groups regarding like how um, landlords are like entering premises uh, for tenants without notice and especially I heard a couple of complaints regarding female tenants where they were not given any notice by their male landlord and they were like half naked <laughs> in their space which is their space but like you know a notice is a basic requirement per law as well so like you know some of the, those things I'm working on trying to tie to tie it together of like how we can have a check and balance regarding rent control as well as the basic guidelines that, and protocols that need to be followed. My other project is, um, I will start up with the data. Uh, you could pull that PowerPoint or a PDF up, please. Okay, uh, so this is the data from National College Health Assessment data. So as uh, some of you know, I was working on Mental Health Awareness Week a couple of weeks back. And doing my research on that, uh, this is data uh, from Inkiro State, so like all of the data that you're seeing is from 2019. They do not have a 2020 data as of yet, and that's the data that we have seen. And if you look at the slide there, uh, like if you see uh, for like the student body of our campus of how their reactions towards like you know feeling helpless uh, or like you know. And if you go through the data, you will see like if they're uh, depressed, feeling lonely, or if they've hurt themselves, or like something like that. Also, if you could go to the last page, please. Uh, to the sleep section. Ah, uh, so. Uh, I'll tie back all together, but like, I'll show you the data first. This is how the college students are not getting enough sleep uh, while going to school, and their success rate is dropping. Uh, if you can go up to sexual assault and prevention. If you want to, this is a public floor, you can always look it up or I can show you the link as well. Um, so like page five. and personal safety. These are the numbers from 2019. Um, so what I'm trying to get at, or like what I'm trying to actually come to is creation of a sp safe space, which actually hosts uh, resources for mental health and also provides students suffering from, let's say like, you know, abusive relationship, abusive, like, you know, something in that sort and having, providing them counseling for it. I did talk to the council, like before people hop on, I did talk to the counseling center regarding that and their minimum time to get in to get basic counseling or basic checkup is one week. Personally, I feel like that's a lot of time for, for a screening and if you're recalled for the second screening, it's about one to two weeks for the follow-up screening, which is a lot of time. So, what my idea is, to have a safe space, and I have looked into different colleges uh, which have done it successfully, especially uh, the Boston College, uh, Dick and UC Berkeley. There are a couple of colleges I looked into. They have a resource center like that. 
they go under the name of caps, but what their main focuses are is like they have counseling centers for students who need to talk, like let's say I'm in a huge depression, right? I need to talk to someone at least to get resources and help. Uh, they can. Uh, they have setups called Let's Talk, which is like they can meet you at a discrete location or any location on campus or anywhere and give you resources about like, hey, this is a step you should do next. Also, like the space, what I'm talking about would also host group counseling, single counseling, as well as couples counseling, as well as host workshops for people suffering from mental health or people suffering from abusive relationships or anything like in that realm. It will also have a um, sexual assault response and prevention program as well in that center. So like, you know, even if you, um, so like, if you know, like, if you report something to, let's say, university security or your hall advisor, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, regarding sexual assault or sexual assault victims reporting something like that, it becomes uh, non-confidential data. And um, so like in through this counseling center, you can talk to the counselor regarding uh, keeping it com uh, confidential by the choice of the victim uh, and getting proper resources so that they can focus on their academic and college life. And if a victim chooses to pursue legal actions, that's a lot of hassle and steps. This resource center will provide them resources as well. This uh, resource center will also host uh, partially nap pods, which I have talked about in my student affairs meeting, uh, which is like where you can have naps. That's why I showed you the sleep data tying it all back together of how college kids do not get any quick sleep and like if they're on campus throughout the day, they need time to recharge and refresh and not cut, uh, pods can actually do that. And there's a lot of universities that's following that and there's data behind it as well. Uh, lastly, I was working, or not working, looking at, uh, into an idea Senator Novak brought regarding the Child care center. Yes, sorry. Child care center for uh, working moms or dads who are going to school. So like providing them that option. I know a lot of universities does that, of having a child care uh, center for while um, parents go to school. So like that's something we are looking into and I'll be working closely with Senator Novak regarding that. And if you have any questions, I will start for questions. Vice President Subversal. Awesome. So thank you so much, Senator Saha, for coming up to and speaking. Um, I would say as I'm listening to your report, I want to advise you to look at what we have and focus off building what we have and consolidating what we have rather than building from scratch. Um, because things when you bring up the child center. So we have the children's house on campus. So rather than try and establish something new, can you collaborate with the director to see if there's stipends for students on campus? You know, Or um, with the sexual assault response team, we have VARP. So how can we collaborate with VARP to use their programming and collaborate with the Women's Center and stuff like that? Um, the other thing that it brings to mind is some of that sounds like it would fall under the scope of what me and President Stiff are pushing for, the Student Basic Needs Hub, which we've now renamed the Maverick Wellness Center. Um, and incorporating some of those things into that, like I think the nap pods and the general like resources and how to get them, whether that's mental, physical, you know, it's wellness, it's all incorporated in there. And so I think it would be a good idea to meet and see like, love the vision, love the goals, what's the most targeted way that we can achieve your goals um, that isn't like trying to create 15 million new things and get burnt out because it's exhausting to try and build something from scratch at this university. So yeah, let's meet and keep talking about this. Um, Senator Nowak. Uh, first of all, wonderful report. Um, I love the usage of uh, showing statistics and bringing up a slideshow, amazing. 
Uh, I want to touch more on the first couple things that you brought up, specifically with relation to um, cooperating with landlords and um, with outside of the university entities. Um, I would just like to know, did you have anything specific in mind or any uh, planning or ideas of what you wish to see done as far as the college's side and the university side cooperating with those landlords? Uh, yes, in a sense. I have a general sense of idea of what I looked at and in my mind. Uh, so what I was seeing is like how we react to it proactively and probably setting up a housing board where uh, like, you know, the representatives from the landlords can also sit on and it will be a more of an advisory committee, not through the school, but probably through the city in our uh, public uh, rule, local affairs relations and probably going from there. So like, you know, we are having a constant communication line of communications with them as well as we are forwarding our issues to them and if they have any feedback on that map, they get a fair response to it as well. That makes sense that I don't lack. Or if you have any ideas regarding that, I would love to hear it as well. Thank you, President Stiff. Um, I also want to compliment you on the use of data. I really appreciate that and seeing like hard numbers. Um, again, great report. I'm very pleased with all the reports I've heard today, especially that the fact that you brought a visual for us to see. Thank you for that. Um, I wanted to, all, like from what I've heard from you, I also think it'll be a good idea for you to serve on like, um, I remember everyone in Senate, we passed that resolution a couple weeks ago for the task force for um, a housing website. I would love to have you serve on that once um, the president can review the resolution. So that would be great. And I also think, I think you've already signed up for city and local fairs will be a good fit for you because of what you're saying. Um, I do like the idea of a collaborative board between like community members and housing landlords. I would look into seeing um, how, um, I forgot what it's called. Maybe John, you can help me, but the uh, neighborhood associations. I would look into seeing how you can collaborate with them as well just to see what they are, like the work they already do on that front. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Awesome. I have uh, uh, Santa Roberts. Uh, thank you. It's uh, more of a comment. Um, I know that there's a few organizations uh, such as Sarah that work with sexual assault. I don't know if there's a chapter on campus or not, but I know that they've been a long organization working on confidential and being as a really strong resource in terms of sexual violence. Uh, so I'm just sending that out as a potential like organization you might wanna work with, uh, potentially that might help. Uh, and then another comment, uh, and I don't know if uh, mental health resources do this, but uh, potentially uh, with, uh, at least my old institution uh, used uh, one day out of the week uh, that it was open. Anyone could walk in, it was a walk-in instead of appointment-based to solve uh, immediate mental health needs. So I don't, I don't know if that exists here or not, but maybe that could be something that could help too in that front. Um, Senator Usefa. Um, just a quick comment about the sleeping pods thing that you discussed. So a couple of days ago, I came to know that there is a place on campus where you can just go and sleep and relax. Uh, I believe it's in the Student Health Services Office, Karkowski 100, I think. So, yeah. Uh, it's a relaxation and massage room in a sense, but definitely not a napping pod. <laughs> I, I looked into that and I know about that space which you're talking about. It's a relaxation space which provides aromatherapy as well as massage chairs, but it's definitely not a napping pod. Thank you. I'm very pleased to know about that because I did not. Um, do I have any other questions? Any further questions? Any questions? Once again, uh, Senator Saha, great report. Really appreciate the presentation and visual. A good example for all the upcoming reports. And thank you. You can take your seat. Moving on to our next order of business, which is vacancies. I am just going to go over the vacancies we have. We have got two off-campus senators. We have allied health and nursing senator. We have college of education senator, uh, social and behavioral sciences senator, which was announced <coughs> last week.
So election will, uh, for this position will be held next week. And then we have Arts and Humanities Center, which I am announcing today, which is October 20th. So the election will be held two weeks from now. I do not have any candidate applications for this meeting, but um, please, uh, I've had a few centers reach out to me uh, with candidates who are interested. If you have candidates who are interested, please have them apply uh, by filling out the application. And um, I would just like to request the faculty and deans and administrations who we have attending our meeting, please recommend uh, uh, students who you think would be a good fit for these positions uh, and would like to serve on student government. Moving on to our next order of business, which is new business. I have a resolution, SAF funded area carry forward resolution, resolution 8.10.10. 07.20.01 motion by uh, President Stiff and seconded by Vice President Saverso. President Stiff, would you like to talk on your motion? Yes. So this came up on the agenda a few weeks ago, but we, we actually tabled it and waited because I wanted to have a meeting with um, Mark Constantine and Teresa Schwartz, um, which uh, advised the SAC, so the Student Allocations Committee, just to kind of understand it more. And now that I do have some more understanding, then I'd like to talk to you all about it a bit more. So as a senator, arguably one of your most important duties is at the end of the year deciding on the student activity fee budget or SAF budget. And so departments in this, uh, under this budget include things like uh, theater, dance, it includes um, uh, campus rec and some other, other departments, oh. IT solutions. So lots of different departments fall under that, uh, that fee. And so, again, as a student, you are charged fees for these different areas. And so, as a student government, we have a special opportunity to provide feedback on some of these areas. And so, um, in the past, as we all know, we've been in a pandemic for two years, but in the past, usually once we allocate money to these departments, um, they spend it in a year. They have uh, programming, travel, and other expenses that allow them to like, go through the money and spend it by the end of the year. Um, but with our special, special circumstances in the last two years, there's been no travel, there's been no programming, so a lot of departments had a lot of extra money that they did not use. Um, the precedent has been, um, typically because again these departments spend their money, that if they have um, over 10% or under 10% of that money not spent, then they would have to write an explanation for that and then they would be allowed to keep um, that amount. But now, what this proposal is um, recommending is that, let's say, if a department had a budget of $20,000 and they only spent $2,000, that means they have $18,000 left over. And they might not use that going into the next year, especially with COVID times being as unpredictable as they are. And so what we are proposing is that these departments uh, have a limit of 10% or $10,000, whichever is less, and that the remainder of the money is given back to our student reserve, uh, the student reserve or whatever, which allows that money to be pulled and taken from in special circumstances in the future, so a reserve fund. Um, you all were provided with this sheet, so you can read over it. Um, if you have it in your phone, you can read over it, but um, that is a proposal. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Saverso, would you like to talk about your second? Yeah, just briefly. Um, so we talked about this pretty extensively in committee, so I think we should be on the same page, um, and hopefully it's clear to everyone now. There are um, a few things we're going to have to change. Uh, there's a stupid Roberts rule that says you can't amend your own motion. So I'm going to have some other senators do it. Yeah. But just, um, just to be clear, starting from the title of the motion, uh, I'm going to later suggest that another senator does that. But you can write it down for now. Uh, but instead of staff funded area carry forward resolution number, 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 the new numbers are 89.10.20.21.01, which is just the updated where the 89th student government and the date, and it's the first time we're passing this motion. Yeah. So that'll be changed. Um, but yeah, basically, we didn't allocate this money with the intention of departments building up their reserves. We allocated this money with the intention of them using it, and so they didn't use it. So let's go off the precedent of them keeping the 10% and take the rest back so that we can reallocate it so that they can use it 
for what they said they were gonna, you know? So it just makes sense. Um, it's not punishing departments, it's just following through on a crazy fiscal year. So, yeah. Um, thank you. At this point, I'm gonna open the floor for questions. Do I have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Seeing as no questions, I'm gonna open the floor for discussions. Uh, Senator Nowak. Motion. Uh, I motion a friendly amendment to uh, change the numbers listed at the top to the ones previously stated by Karis Fersel to reflect the 89th Senate, the current date being 10.20.21, uh, keeping the .01 the same as this is the first time. Uh, also, in addition to that, later on um, during the whereas because of the effects of COVID block, uh, I motion to change fiscal year 2020 to fiscal year 2021 to reflect the current year. Uh, again, then in the abbreviated version immediately after. Um, in the next line down, whereas programming is anticipated to continue to be impacted in fiscal year, uh, I would like to change 2021 to 2022 to reflect the current fiscal year. Um, and then in be it resolved, I would like to change the two instances of uh, fiscal year 20 to fiscal year 21. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. second. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Madam Speaker, since those are like logistical motions, if the person who made the main motion accepts them as friendly, they do not need to be voted on since they're not necessarily substantive to the uh, to the uh, intent of the motion. Awesome. Um, so do you accept these changes? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I accept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I was not gonna like you. Nope. <laughs> no. All right. No. <laughs> Do I have any other discussion points? Any other discussion? Uh, Santa Roberts. Motion for the previous question. Second. Uh, all right. So we're gonna move. We're gonna now vote on to end the discussion and move on to the voting. So, all in favor to move to the previous question, please raise your placard. We have one for you. Um, any against? Any abstain? Um, I don't see anything over Zoom. So um, the senators over Zoom, I did not see any um, votes from you. So if you want to just raise your hand if you are in favor. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and say that on a vote of 18 to 0 to 0, this motion is passed. Now we're going to uh, vote on the resolution itself with the amendments that we just made. So all in favor on, of the amended resolution, please raise your placard. Um, don't see anything over Zoom, 22. All right. <laughs> All against, please raise your placard now. I still don't see anything over Zoom. All abstain, please raise your placard at this point. Or send me a message if you're on Zoom. All right, with a clear majority of favor on a vote of 22 to 0 to 0, this motion is passed. next order of business which is old business we do not have any old business for today moving on to announcements do i have anyone for announcements senator no whack howdy everybody do you remember uh mavathon that just came in and spoke yes um, <laughs> 
part of what I do as a PR and marketing is uh, a newly assigned task that I'm going to be <laughs> running our, uh, our events that we choose to go to. And as part of that, I would like to ask if anybody is interested in being a part of a group or a team for Mavathon. Um, and do we have permission to send around a sign-up sheet? Yes. Cool. So I'm going to send down a sign-up sheet for if anyone is interested in participating in Mavathon. All right, thank you. Do I have anyone else for announcements? John. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good afternoon. Uh, just a couple of things today. I don't have a huge long list of stuff like I have the past couple of weeks. So uh, thank you to those students who've been asking to meet with me about Senator Projects. I think we've got some good stuff moving, so please uh, continue to reach out. Um, the past couple of weeks have been extremely busy with the event that I'm going to speak to next. Um, but uh, if there are questions I can answer, don't be afraid to be specific about questions in an email to me, too. That, sometimes that's just as easy to respond to. Um, the next thing I want to mention is uh, the ULE conference. We are in day three of the ULE conference. This is the eighth annual um, ULE conference. Uh, there are three sessions taking place tonight. There was supposed to be a fourth, but there was a scheduling mix up with one of the presenters, so one has been canceled. <coughs> Um, I want to uh, give a shout out to those who I've seen showing up at events already. I know uh, uh, Senator Wynn has already been at several of the events. I know uh, that Senator Osman has been there. Um, uh, Senator Flynn served on a panel during one of them, as did Senator Swancutt. Um, so if there are folks who would like to come out and attend, the schedule is available. You can see the student activities. Uh, Facebook page has shared that. The schedule is available again, three sessions tonight, one at seven, two at eight. Uh, and then two tomorrow, uh, two at seven and one at eight. Um, the locations and session descriptions are posted. Um, there are some faculty members offering extra credit and we're tracking attendance. We're also doing drawings from every session for uh, gift cards. Uh, so one recipient at every session will be will receive a $25 Barnes & Noble gift card. And then at the end of the week, we'll also draw for uh, a winner of a $100 Quick Trip gift card. Um, so please be sure and come out if you are able. Uh, that's all I've got today. So I hope to see you at some of the upcoming events. Uh, and again, I'll hang out if there's anything I can help with. Awesome. Uh, do I have anyone else for announcements? Uh, Senator Flynn. Family weekend this weekend. Um, this Saturday at, was it 10 a.m.? 10.30 a.m. 10.30, yeah, 10.30 a.m. Um, there will be a bounty castle in the dome and other inflatable fun and <laughs> usual stuff by um, oh, what's the other Campus Rec, yes. And NRHH and RHA are running this event and it will be fun and people should go because bouncy castle. Um, I have a follow-up question. Is the, if this is a res like event, is this open to all students? Oh, it's, it's just sponsored by okay. RHA. It's not so yeah. open to all. Open to all. Awesome. Uh, do I have anyone else? Uh, Mark. Anyways, looking for a little therapy tonight. Our our pet therapy is down in the Harp Lounge uh, this evening at seven o'clock. It'll be gone for a couple couple hours. So. We always have a good turnout for that. I just want to encourage people for your wellness. It's nice to be with some pets. So when you don't have your pets here, a lot of you don't have that. And uh, give her a little stress. Thank you. Uh, do I have anyone else for? Um, uh, I have a question. Sorry. Sorry, what time was the event going to be till? Noon. Till noon. Okay. Thank you. Um, and just a follow-up, do you want to mention the date again for the event? This Saturday the 23rd. Awesome. Do I have any other announcements? Uh, Senator Wing. Uh, so last night I actually just learned about a event that is coming up here in the next month or so. On November 16th, uh, there's a joint event between uh, the Law Club and Turning Point USA. Uh, we're going to be hosting uh, the Alliance Defending Freedom. They're a, uh, a law firm dedicated to uh, protecting students' rights on campus. Uh, so I'd uh, love it if we could get some student government representation to that. Uh, but yeah, that will be at 7 p.m. on uh, 
I believe it's Tuesday, November 16th. <coughs> awesome. Uh, do I have anyone else for the announcements? Uh, President Stair. I would just like to say I'm very proud of everyone today. This was a super efficient meeting. I'm proud of very, all the Senate reports we've heard. They were super efficient as well. Um, there's something else that was like pretty cool. I, I'll think of it later. But um, <laughs> yeah, and oh yeah, I was gonna say this proposal that we um, passed, I think it's in a good example of how efficiently things can work inside committees when we discuss and then bring it to Senate other than us just like having a three hour Senate meeting or a four hour Senate meeting when things haven't been discussed. So keep discussing stuff in your committees so that way we can go pretty quick here. Thank you, I appreciate that announcement. Uh, do I have any last announcement? Any last announcement? Seeing as no announcements, I'm gonna move to roll call. Let's go real quick. Bra Senator Swanke. Here. Uh, Senator Bethnick. Here. Senator Hashimoto. Here. Senator Chimizi. Senator Chimizi. Senator Carlson. Here. Senator Roberts. Here. Senator Angie Denby. Here. Senator T. Schiffer. Here. Senator Hawk. Here. Senator Basha. Senator Basha. Senator Ishan. Same. Senator Singh. <laughs> Senator Osmond. Here. Senator Waldo. Here. Senator Saha. Senator Roger Gopal. Here. Senator Koku. Here. Senator Wynn. Yeah. Senator Uzafa. Here. Senator Wing. Here. Senator Nowak. Howdy. Senator Flynn. Yo. Senator Hopwood. Here. Senator Hussein. Here. Senator Reuger. Here. President Stiff. Here. Vice President Saverso. Here. Speaker Fan. Here. We are done. So I officially adjourn this meeting at 5.50 p.m. Can you pass me the sign-up sheet for Mabathon? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I will sign up, but I will not be there. Okay. I will be there. And you can also sign up for the end of the night. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to put plus six sacks. Yeah, I think that is a good one. I know you guys are working. So, yeah, we still see you later. Yeah, so, wait. Oh, actually. Um, so, Kelly, you know what time the Watson thing is? I'm thinking Pod, about a uh, CSO so thing in the takeover. I want to say begins at 7 p.m. Okay, yeah. If we're late, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, we'll yeah. still have 7 p.m. Yeah, I'll send it to you. We start, because setup officially starts at 5 p.m. and we're going to begin setup again. Oh, that's an obvious question. So maybe you want to like set up before then? Yeah, like, maybe, or, I don't, or, I don't know, I don't know how you guys want to do that. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Sorry. Hi. Did you want to talk to me? No? Oh, we're just to bug me? Oh my god, you got all of them, and that's great. Uh, yes. Also, uh, I just sent an email. Check if it's you because we have a Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh,
something that you can't figure out, please do give me a call so I can come help out. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Johannes. Good job. Right away, so you're yeah, on the same it's one. the same one, yeah. 
The other one's kind of a backup in the future yeah, expansion backup. kind of a deal. This is a lot nicer than it used to be, that's for sure. Well, yep. It's going to get better again. Ryan's saying they might be doing some stuff over the uh, Christmas break. Good, that looks nice. better, so. If we work together, things are better than if we work against. Absolutely. So hopefully everybody works together for it. Outside? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to go grab one of them and bring it in. Today, a part of Johannes will be played by Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Like the way everything is looking for you? Everything working well? Yeah, it is. The only thing I've noticed is sometimes when we switch to a Zoom speaker, they turn into like weird red zombies for a minute. So what happens there is if they stop speaking and someone here speaks, it switches back to this camera and feeds back. Oh, it gets confused? Well, yeah, it's kind of feeding back into itself. I also know sometimes people let it go as a Zoom thing very rapidly. 